Welcome back everyone, I'm Jennifer and I'm your host. Today I'm here with Gary and Brian and we're gonna talk to you about the insights on AV that you gave to us last week. We put out a survey and I wanna thank everyone for submitting your responses and gathering your feedback for us. We really appreciate it. So today we're here to discuss the results of the survey. Uh, we first talked about what was important to you and what your viewpoint was regarding fall events. Let's take a look at some of the results. So, uh, thanks so much for filling out the survey. So on the first question, you were able to pick between one of four different answers. And so we're gonna kind of go through those with you one at a time. So on the first answer was, did you intend to hold your event as long as the attendees are permitted to travel and of course the hotels are open? And 36% of you responded that you, you definitely, at, at that point in time, which is about a week ago, you didn't plan to have your event if, if your attendees could travel and if uh, the overall event space was open. So that's a 36% response um, of all those that responded for that first answer. Excellent, the second highest answer was converting event to a virtual or hybrid and 36% also said yes, they would convert their event to a hybrid or a virtual event. Um, so that reinforces uh, the idea that planners out there do intend to have their events, at least most of them, uh, whether it's live, virtual, or a hybrid of both. So I think between those two answers, if my math is right, that's 72%. Uh, yeah, it's yes. looking pretty good. <laughs> so of those that responded, 72% plan to have an event of some sort. Uh, if they have to go virtual, they will. If they have to go hybrid, they will. If they can go to their venue, that would be fantastic. So hey, Brian, uh, that was a great response. How many actually said they might postpone or cancel? Not that many. That's good news. But some did. So the next couple <laughs> answers are, would you like to postpone or cancel your event um, unless there's a significant change in the health situation with the vaccine um, or treatment? So 21% of the respondents said yes, they intend to cancel or postpone their event if that happens. And then the last option was other, and we got some responses that people gave us. And so around 29% of the overall events uh, of the planners that we surveyed have postponed or plan on postponing their event for the fall. So we understand that absolutely, you know, it's tailored to each person's overall company and what your event is all about. But we were very encouraged that, you know, 72% plan to have their event, whether it's virtual or hybrid or a combination of both. So that was really our first question. Uh, we're happy to share those answers with you. Our second question really focused on the health and safety of the attendees and the staff. Let's see some of the results on those questions. So the first answer, really, we gave you five different choices and you could pick between any of those answers. You could pick all five or you could pick one or two of them. So, you know, what we're gonna share with you is kind of the overall response that we got and then the, the percentage of respondents that chose any one of those five answers. So, um, the number one answer was social distancing and, and there is an 85% uh, response rate that chose that one um, and said, you know, we expect people to social distance. It's probably a good behavior anyways when there's flu season or viruses going around. So we definitely see social distancing as part of our events for, uh, for the future and something that we'll see happening on an ongoing basis. So social distancing was the number one answer and we had a few more also that were pretty high. Yeah, the next highest one was masks worn by attendees and hotel staff. So, I mean, I'm assuming now with COVID being around for a while, you go out to grocery stores, restaurants, you go out in public, everybody's wearing a mask. It's actually pretty common in other countries, but I think in the U.S. it, it wasn't as common. And, and now it, it seems to be moving in that direction. So that's going to roll into events. A large part of the, the people participating in the survey said yes, you know, they would like to see attendees and staff, hotel staff wearing masks uh, at their events. And so we're still learning um, to really how to properly wear masks and do they really work the way, you know, that they should. And there's a lot of science still behind that. And so as, as a society, we'll learn and we'll follow kind of the, the medical advice, whether masks are, you know, the right thing to do in the right space or the right environment. And, um, but, you know, from a confidence perspective, what we're seeing in those first two responses is anything we can do to make your attendees feel more safe. Um, and those were both 82 and 85% response rates. So the majority of you felt that masks and social distancing were gonna be key. So one of, the, one of the other areas that we saw, and there was a pretty high response rate of 67%, was temperature scanning. And so that's something I think also that we're still learning a lot about and how effective is that and does it help or not. But overall, it does make those that are there feel that you're doing things that you can to really help make sure that those that are in attendance are healthy and don't have anything uh, contagious to pass around. So we're, uh, we see that there was a 67% response on that. You know, how do you see that coming into the uh, meeting space and into the hotels? 
Yeah, there's a few ways. So there's several pieces of technology out there. There's like cameras that can scan people as they enter the mm -hmm. event. Uh, and they can identify if someone has a temperature and then someone would approach that person and you know, pull them aside and potentially do secondary screening. Uh, we'd have to work out some of the things like larger events, there's a lot of people. So what does that look like? Is there like a bigger structure with multiple cameras above that? Or are there maybe for smaller events, there's like archways that people have to go through. So, uh, you know, we'd have to work on that piece, I believe. But um, it is definitely possible. The technology does exist today. And, uh, you know, it might be a part of events in the future. Do you guys see that as something Clarity would help their clients with? Yeah, so Clarity has always been there for the meeting planners and whatever technology issues they have or whatever you know, challenge they have in pulling off their live event. And you know, we, we, we really are there to be advisors, consultants, to help. And I think in this case, for temperature scanning, there is some technology involved, there's some staffing involved, and those are areas that we, we will be able to work with and help with, whether that's our team helping them or whether we're helping them find a good solution for that. I think the hotels will also play a role. Some of them may have those installed. Um, in the lobbies or in other areas of the hotel. Maybe we need to help make sure there are some temporary ones in the meeting space. So I see all of those different things taking place as hotels begin to open up. Yeah, I think, it, I think some of these things, social distancing and mask is, is gonna be expected as, as the events come back online. And I do think temperature scanning you know, could be as well. So as a community going to these, these, these events, I think this re these results are kind of showing that you know, this is what you may expect when the events come back online. And the mask could become a branding opportunity for sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> we always need a sponsorship yeah. opportunity for sure. Yeah, the more stylish, the better, right? Yep. <laughs> so I think the other two areas really centered around, you know, private quarantine areas, pre-screening areas, and then on-site testing services. So what we're seeing with that is that's kind of the next layer of, of comfort and support for your guests. If you are able to have a live event and your guests are taking you know, the initiative to travel and to participate in that event, you wanna give them an area where if they do have some concerns or if they're concerned about how they're feeling, that they're able to really go into an area and speak with a medical professional and really you know, have that opportunity to figure out you know, how they're feeling and is it something that they should be concerned with or not. So we did see over 44, 41% on on-site testing and 44% of the respondents felt that there should be a, an observation area or a screening area where somebody who is you know, having those symptoms or maybe they were flagged during the temperature scanning, they can go be evaluated and figure out whether they're healthy enough to participate in the event or not. So you know, overall, I think the theme is that you know, we really want our, our attendees to feel that we're doing everything we can to make them feel safe at the same time they want to come to the events and we want to have the live events. And so, you know, co combining those two efforts together to the best that we can with what we know is really what we're seeing taking place. And what you as meeting planners are telling us, you would like the, us to make sure those things are in place for you to be able to go forward with your event and make your event happen. We ended with an open answer question for you guys to kind of tell us, give us some feedback on what your expectations would be for the hotels and the venues for live events. What were some of the answers we saw from our respondents? Yeah, so one of the first answers, you know, really was their events range from all different sizes. And one of the first answers really was, look, we want to be safe, you know, and we don't want our attendees, you know, to have any risk. At the same time, we want to have our event. And so it was like, you know, focus on how can we get our message out if we can't have a meeting? And so that was really just reinforced really the, the stories that we've been talking about the last several weeks about how to really share your message virtually if you have to. And I think that was really the major theme was be safe. You know, we're nervous, but we, we're optimistic. We wanna have our event, but if we can't, we want a really good solution to get to our attendees and to get our message out and to share our ideas and our thoughts with them with all of those you know, that would normally come to our event and doing that in a way that's you know, exciting and meaningful and engaging is hard to do. And so really you know, working on that virtual solution and potentially even a hybrid solution is something that is really important. And we saw that in our survey results, we saw that in the verbatim responses. And we know that all of you are seeking answers and solutions to figure out really how to really have an effective virtual or hybrid event. And so you know, we're here to really help you resolve, solve those and really help you answer those questions. Um, but we're very encouraged by the fact that you know, most of the you know, answers were about how can we accomplish having our event versus shutting everything down. Yeah, and on that, Brian, one of the highest uh, pieces here was social distancing at 85%. And we've been doing layouts to, to incorporate social distancing. Um, attendee counts have 
could potentially decrease so then you can spread those people out but another way to do that based on your point is you know maybe you can bring five or six people together still and they can social distance you know and not be around a large group of people and you can still roll that into your virtual event so one idea in the social distancing realm is you know maybe you can bring five six seven people together some of those keynote presenters they could definitely incorporate social distancing but you can also build out like a studio or a messaging platform for the virtual event. Kind of like what we have right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. You know, I got my brother Gary here, so we can be pretty close to each other, right? You know, share families, you know? You're, so you're that, part of the circle. That works out okay, okay right? So I have a yeah, question so. for you guys about the hotels. Um, mm -hmm. The timing of hotels reopening, how do you see that having an impact on the live events? Yeah, so the hotels have a lot of challenges because they have a lot of, you know, issues to resolve in their local community. So when you're, when you're faced with reopening a ho you know, hotel with that many team members that are from the local community, you have to follow a lot of the local guidelines of when they can open, how can they open, and that may be different for each hotel, it may be different in each city. And so what we're seeing is a lot of uncertainty with the hotels and the planners as to when they're gonna be comfortable. They want the hotel to open several days, weeks before their event comes, right? So that's hard because the hotel really can't open until there's events or until there's more guests. So there's this challenge right now that we're seeing as to far as when is the timing going to be that some hotels begin to open. So we understand that that's um, an uncertain future. And so our suggestion is continue the planning, make sure your event is ready to go, whether you have a venue or not, work on how you're going to communicate that message. If you can go to your venue, then that's a plus, And then that's going to make it even better. Um, if some of your attendees can come and some need to attend virtually, that will be fantastic. But what we're seeing is a lot of just uncertainty around when each hotel is going to open. And I think they're trying to solve that problem now. So we might know more in the next few weeks as to when the timing might look like. But right now, we don't have a lot of that knowledge right now. And I think that's OK. You can continue to move forward with planning your event without knowing whether or not your venue can open. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is if you do have a venue booked, keep it booked, and you're going to drive that live event through your purpose, but you're also going to have a plan to drive that live, uh, the virtual event through that same purpose. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it might be a good idea to have, have both plans kind of available and ready as, as we move forward. Well, thank you guys for listening and watching today. Um, we really appreciate all your help with the survey and getting your feedback, and we'll be back next week for some more AV insights and advice for you. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Have a good day. Have a great day.